Hello everyone, this is Radley. So today this is a tutorial for this Jiggle Geo Boil animation. Uh, this entire animation is quite simple. The only tricky part is actually the Jiggle. But uh, I've discussed this similarly in spider web animation. So let's start. So here we in Blender. As always, I'm going to use the preset which you can download for free from the link in the description. Let's start with an icosphere. And I want to increase the amount of subdivision so that we have nice topology to really uh, extrude its face. There are many different ways to do the basic setup. You can extrude the mesh. I think this is a way. But uh, I'm going to point the distribute to instance more icosphere. So let's point the distribute. You can distribute on face, but I'd like to point the distribute because I can set a, a, a roughly a desired amount. Okay, so maybe. Uh, something like that. Okay, four points is good enough for demonstration. And then I'm going to point instance and take the original icosphere, but I'm going to decrease its scale. It would be better if they do not really intersect. Otherwise, you may generate some weird result. And then you decrease the average scale. So by increasing the amount, you can see some balls is bigger, some balls are tinier. And uh, try to remove the intersection if possible. And you can change the seed, of course. Okay. Something like this. And then I can join geometry to visualize both initial bigger sphere and the later tiny sphere. Uh, right now, this these spheres are not really connected to each other as you can see there's a clear border of cut. So here what I'm going to do is to add a set position and recast uh, this tiny sphere to direct some points to mix together. So I need to realize the instance because I need to access these vertices of my instances during recast the process. And I'm shooting rays from my initial bigger sphere to the direction of normal and see if it actually hits this tiny sphere. So uh, I need a normal node to define the redirection. And if it hits, then I deform it. So you can use this hit position to define the position. So now you can see something is happening. And if you disable this child or instances, then you can see we do not have the clear cut because they are merging together. Uh, and we can use a mix vector node to mix these two status. So I can use a position. As you can see this result. You can smooth these kind of cutting edges out by using a blur uh, attribute. And here we are going to use a basically a smooth modifier. So smooth position which is really just blurring the position. So now you get a kind of nice effect. And of course you can set up shade smooth. Then you have ta -da, this effect. Uh, here I want you to be aware that the basic oscillator event. So if you increase this mix factor to two, then it becomes more extruded out. And if you go negative 0 0.5, then you have this kind of depression event. And basically, if you wiggle these values up and down, you have this kind of a jiggle effect. Okay. It means that we do not need to do any simulation for this animation. We can really just play around with this parameter. But the issue can also come from this parameter because by the end of the day, we want our animation to stabilize at the moment. For example, at one, or stabilize when it's zero. But when we try to wiggle it, then you will uh, make it not a clamp at zero, but rather for more negative value, something like that. So it can be a little bit tricky when you play around that. That's why I try to do anything, everything afterwards and make it procedural. Uh, but anyway, so let's start with some delay because right now we're using one value to control the animation of the whole setup. So let's create some randomness. So create a random value 
at this point stage. So I take a random value. So I think 0 0.1 is good enough. Maybe it's not very obvious, but we can try. So maybe 1.5. And we sample this random value. So now if you visualize it, then you will see there is a random value for every region. And we can use an add. And now if you try to play it, this value, let's clamp it. Then you can see that the sum of the region will extrude earlier than the others. Okay. So now we create a kind of randomness or order in this animation. And we can just complete this animation by using a time info. So we put that in. And now you can see by default is finishing everything. So we can offset the time a little bit. Uh, maybe something like that. And you play this animation, you can see it goes very slowly. Let's just uh, take this factor, maybe lower like a five. So now you can see we have this. Of course, you can also keyframe it. Uh, you can add an eye to these keyframes, but uh, this is just an example. So now we have this result. The next is just to add the inertia. So next, let's uh, add a initial deformer. In fact, to make this initial animation, I made a preset called the inertial offset. As you can see, there is actually set position and there is offset. But uh, over time, I think this initial deformer is better. Uh, because it can be general for more cases and it's a little bit annoying to really update the code for one and I have to copy paste for the other. So let's do the initial deformer. And the basic principle is explained in the past uh, with spider web simulation. You do set a position and you mix this desired position with initial position. And since it's a simulation inside, so we have to play this animation to cache the result. So we make this animation, nothing really happens because we need to play with this factor. So by manipulating this factor, you can see the result. It may not be obvious, but if you increase the factor to 15, then you can see it bounces, okay? So this is kind of idea. And then we add a sign function. and uh, we can visualize this wave, a default wave. So this is a sign function which never decay, but you increase the decay persistence maybe to five, then you can see it's it wiggles and finally it's converge at zero. And the zero is our desired position, you see? Okay, and uh, this line is actually the designed amplitude. So this is one, but obviously due to the formula, it actually go above one a little bit. And uh, this line is actually a full cycle. So you need to be aware with the frequency because now it's a little bit too high. This is kind of important because we're using frame number. So after six frames, you will reach here. Okay. Uh, I hope uh, this is working. We can decrease the frequency uh, or you can just divide this frame number maybe two, three, something like that. You get a kind of idea. And finally you plug this uh, into sign function and now we can actually visualize the changes. So if we play this animation, you can see they start to wiggle, okay? And uh, I noticed there are some little bit of bug. It's not a very obvious, but you have some of these kind of glitches. I think um, I'm not uh, really sure the reason uh, I maybe investigate that, but maybe it's not as solvable. I don't know. Uh, but with the smooth position, you actually do not really see. It's very obvious and it's very cool. And once you finish this animation, what you can also do is just to subtract this value afterwards so that you have a, another cycle of animation, but this is basically the principle of everything.
Okay, uh, but obviously we need to change a little bit about the shader, but it's very kind of simple. You have this hit distance and the is a hit. Okay, so we can visualize these two results. So we have this is hit and we have this hit distance. Okay, and it goes from zero to whatever number. Okay. So we basically just uh, to multiply these value together so that it only shows this deformed area with a fourth from black to kind of white and we store name the attribute and we plug it and we can name that as a color C so that we can visualize this functionality even after we finish this animation. So now if I take a set material, and within shader, let's call this material an attribute. So we have this C, and it should be capital. So now if I look at material preview, then you can see it. So next is really just a mix color. Maybe give it a kind of red color. So we have a black, red, and that we have our whatever stuff being made. And you can increase the sub uh, subsurface and you can give different roughness you can give different emissions transmission clear code the chain does not really matter but just uh, keep doing your mixing work you can mix with float so that you give a kind of different roughness um, default it becomes very rough but uh, this white area it becomes very very white and it's not very obvious maybe we can take a color wrap to make the white part really white. So you can see they, they seem really like different materials, but you have a transition in between. Uh, maybe I should make it white. Okay, uh, so this is just a kind of example. So, yes. So basically play around with these settings and animate it, do whatever things you want. And this is it. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.